In this example, we are going to look at the computation of gross requirement and the netting process and finding the net requirements. We will not apply the lead times yet, but we first go through this computation and then we will include the lead time also in the, in the next problem. So we have the two different models of the filing cabinet and suppose we want to produce 100 units of TOL and 300 units of HQ. So we are given end item TOL and HQ requirement is 100 and 300. And we also know from problem number 1 okay, we have low level code Zero, one, two, and three, and we have that here. Items of TOL and HQ, A, B, and F, C, D, and G, and E. So we need to do the computation in this order, not in alphabetical order, but you have to make sure that you do the computations for one level, starting from level zero, all the items, and then you move down to the next level, and then you move down to the next level. By doing the computations in this order, you will always make sure that when you process a particular item, the requirements for all its parents are already computed and they are available. If you don't follow this order, then that may not be the case and you end up not computing the gross requirements accurately. And that's why it is very important that this order is followed. So we already have the requirements for the level 0 items, TOL and HQ. So let's start with uh, now level 1 items. So level 1. So we start with level 1. And within a given level, it doesn't matter in which order. You can do it in any order you want. So we'll start with A. Okay. Now we have to use the bill of materials. That's what tells us how many units are needed for each of the parent. So A appears in two different places. You need one unit of A for each TOL and one unit of A for each HQ. So the gross requirement is 1 times TOL plus 1 times HQ. So we have 1 times 100 and then 1 times 300 and that is equal to 400. So that is the gross requirement for A. Now we are given the stock available. So we have 200 units available. So net requirement is 400 minus 200 equal to 200. Okay, now let's take B. B you need 5 units of B for each TOL. So the requirement is 5 times TOL. And that is equal to 5 times 100 equal to 500. And we have 300 available. So 500 minus 300 is 200. And next is F. Okay, not in alphabetical order. Don't do C here. Okay, next is F. Now F is five units of F for each HQ. So five times 
h q and that is equal to 5 times h q is 300 so you get 1500 and we have 150 available from here so 1500 minus 150 is 1350 so that's the net requirement for F now we are done with level 1 okay let's do level 2 now C Now C, there are two different instances of the same C. One is for B, so one unit of C for each B. Don't don't get confused with that five. This five is related to T O L, not down here. One unit of C for each B, and one unit of C for each F. So the gross requirement is one times B plus 1 times F and so you get 1 times now remember this is from the net requirement don't use this quantity okay. okay this is the gross requirement for B of which 300 are already available you need to only make 200 of B so when you use 200 and then 1 times F is 1350 so here this 200 comes from there and this 1350 comes from there so gives you 1550 and C is 120 the available inventory so 1550 minus 120 is 1430 next is D now D is one unit for each B so 1 times B and once again it is that 200 don't use the gross requirement should be net requirement is 200 and we have 300 available so there is no net requirement because th this 200 gross requirement can be met with the available 300 don't put minus 100 here you, your net requirement cannot be negative and then we have G we need one unit of G for each F so one times F so that is one times 1350 is 1350 and we have 1000 of that available so 1350 minus 1000 gives you 350 that's level 2 now uh, let's go to level 3 and there is only one item which is E and we need 8 units of E for each D and 4 units of E for each G so that will be 8 times D plus 4 times G and that is equal to 8 times okay, D comes from here so that is 0 plus 4 times 350 is 1440 okay, again remember the 0 is from there and this is from here and 1500 of E is available and therefore no net requirement for E. This problem illustrates the concept of finding the gross requirement from the parent and then taking out the available inventory so the remaining is your net. 
Now, this is not the MRP. This illustrates part of the computations involved in MRP. MRP would be one where you will also incorporate the lead time. So that's what we're going to do in the next problem.